Hello there and welcome to Bad Juju. My name is Mama Jules and every Monday I post a new true crime video. And if that sounds like the kind of thing that you would like to see more of, then why not subscribe? You can press the button which is below me here somewhere. And if you also press the bell icon, you'll get notified every time a new video is uploaded. Okay then, let's get on with our case today, which takes us to Louisiana in the USA. And as well as being truly horrific and heartbreaking, it is also a great tale of strength and how a community was united together in its determination to bring a monster to justice. So, if you're ready, grab a tea or a coffee and get comfortable. And together we will investigate the horrifying case of Mickey Shunick. Michaela Shunick, who was known to everyone as Mickey, was born on May the 21st, 1990. She lived with her family in Lafayette, Louisiana, and was known as a bright, funny and confident girl. She loved animals, especially horses, and taught horseback riding lessons to children in her local area. She was devoted to her family and friends and was studying anthropology as a senior student at the University of Louisiana. She loved music and cycling and threw herself into everything she did. She had such a passion for cycling that she had a tattoo of a bicycle on her right ankle. On the evening of Friday, May the 18th, 2012, Mickey and her friends had made plans to enjoy a night of live music at the Atmosphere Bistro in Lafayette, which was a cosy neighbourhood bar, grill, art gallery and music venue. She promised her mum that she would be home early as the next day the family were celebrating her younger brother Zach's graduation from high school. Early the next morning, Saturday, May the 19th, the family were preparing for the graduation when Mickey's mother went into her bedroom to check that she was getting ready, but noticed that Mickey's bed hadn't been slept in. This was very out of character for Mickey and her mum just immediately knew that something was wrong. However, the Shunick family headed for the graduation event anyway without Mickey, just expecting her to be there when they got there. But she wasn't. Mickey's mum, Nancy, kept ringing her phone and sending text messages, but she wasn't replying and the phone was going straight to voicemail. Their concern was beginning to grow rapidly. Mickey's mum, Nancy, and her sister, Charlie, began ringing round Mickey's friends and quickly established that she had left the bistro with her best friend, Bretley. Mickey and Bretley had then gone on to another bar and from there they had gone to Taco Bell to grab some food. They then went back to his house for a short while and at about 1.40am she left his house to travel the four miles or so back to her home on her bicycle, a black Schwinn Madison with glittery gold handlebars. After finding this out, the family then started to panic, wondering if she might have been involved in a hit and run and could be lying injured somewhere. Mickey's mum then rang the police to report her daughter missing. Bretley was the first person interviewed by the investigation team, as he was the last person to have seen Mickey on the night that she disappeared. Detective Stephen Bajar quickly ruled out Bretley from the investigation, as all his accounts of the evening's events were collaborated on the CCTV footage from the bar that they'd been in between the hours of 10 and midnight, and from the cameras from Taco Bell. And it didn't take very long for the police to confirm Bretley's account of the events. The detectives then established the route that Mickey would have taken on her bike after leaving Bretley's house and they searched for any CCTV footage to find out what had happened to her on that night. Her route home was considered to be through a fairly safe neighbourhood area. The community where Mickey lived was getting involved and trying to do anything it could to support the family. Find Mickey posters and flyers were handed out. 
Dozens of volunteers searched across the surrounding areas and they even held a vigil in the local park to pray for her safe return and to comfort her distraught family. And we just want our friend back. A show of solidarity by candlelight for the family of Mickey Shunick. This as the search for the missing woman prepares to enter its fourth day. Her family and loved ones made public appeals pleading for her to come home. We still just need more volunteers and people talking about it. People who can't get out there and walk. You know, we understand not everybody is able to go on mile-long searches and things like that. If they want to come here and see if there's anything they can do to help, or at least just get online and email everyone. A parent of one of the children she gave horse riding lessons to offered up a $10,000 reward, which quickly increased to a reward of $25,000. I want to bring in Mickey's family. Her sister Charlie with us and her father Tom are here. It's been six days. I know you're exhausted. Just your mental and physical exhaustion, I'm sure, is so much to bear. What's keeping you guys going at this point? I really think it's um, obviously the outreach from the community. And then um, we've been being contacted by people globally and nationally. I feel like every day, at first I thought every day would get worse, but um, every day has been getting more and more positive. You know, everyone's still really confident and positive and in good spirits. And so um, really, it's it's everyone else that's helping us, not ourselves. Mickey's sister gave an interview to the local news station to say the family was still optimistic that Mickey would be found. Friends set up a Find Mickey Now Facebook page. Homes and businesses from the community offered up their CCTV footage to the police to try to find something that could help the case. We have been reviewing hours and hours of video and, and, and part of the biggest issue is that a lot of the video is either coming from inside of a building facing out so it's very grainy or very difficult to look at or we just can't make out exactly what's passing in front of the camera. So it's so important that, you know, unfortunately, you know, we may have missed some, some people that have surveillance equipment that they review their own equipment for us. And, and if they see something of importance, that they contact the police, either by calling 911 or calling the tips line at 291-8633. After days of searching through footage, the police finally got their first big lead. A camera had picked up an image of a young woman cycling down a dark street alone. They were confident that it was Mickey. Here... At 1.47am on Saturday the 19th of May, we can see CCTV of a young woman on a bike. This was the clearest image of her passing a cast station and was captured several minutes after the first image was picked up. But then, about half a mile later, she disappeared from the camera's views. Police were really worried that something bad had happened. Upon going back through the tapes, police found something new. They found a white pickup truck caught in several shots driving behind Mickey. Finally tonight, a break in the case of missing UL student Mickey Shunick. Surveillance video captured these images of a bicyclist police say could be Mickey traveling on Versailles Boulevard and then seen again on St. Landry Street. Both times this white pickup truck is captured on video after Mickey traveled those streets. It appeared to be a white four-door Chevrolet Z71. The searches of the local area by the community continued with thousands of people turning out to try to locate Mickey. We need to put the tea separate because a lot of people have been wanting tea. Margaret Beer so can barely great. keep up with all of the donations flowing in. Still have things coming in. We really just truly appreciate all the community support. This family really needs it. It's not just food and water. They receive money, supplies, and basic necessities. We've had a dumpster delivered here. We have uh, porta potty. We have uh, toilet paper, paper towel, all the things that are necessary to host the hundreds of volunteers who are showing up to participate in the search and outreach effort. Businesses are chipping in too, and not just with donations. Lamar is running these billboards in several states, and Walgreens posting info on their marquees all free of charge. Whether it's from the city, whether it's from a corporation, whether it's the next door neighbors, they're all here. All of the donations of money, supplies, and food not only keep family, friends, and volunteers going physically, but emotionally as well. We're very heartened to know that all we have to do is focus on bringing Mickey home. 
and that everything else is taken care of by the people around us. The show of support keeps their spirits up. Hey, what's that? One donation at a time. They were handing out flyers, posters and offering a reward for her safe return. However, on May the 27th, eight days after Mickey had gone missing and some 30 miles from where she had last been seen. Lafayette police confirming to KATC that they found her bicycle today. It was found beneath the Whiskey Bay I-10 bridge at exit 127 and that is now the scene of an active search as investigators look for even more clues tonight. Maddie Garrett has the latest from there. Maddie. What we do know, police say fishermen found Mickey's bike here under the I-10 bridge in the Whiskey Bay area. The rear tire on that bike was damaged. It was the only damage, visible damage that we could see to the bike. Basically, the uh, the rim was bent with the uh, tire dislodged from the rim itself. At first, it was kind of like getting punched in the stomach, but after I really thought about it, and I think it's positive. We found the bike. We didn't find her. Mickey's sister Charlie stays positive and believes the latest news and that damage to the bike supports her theory that someone made a mistake and her sister is still out there. You know, some damage can mean that it was either hit and run or it was absolutely an abduction. Obviously, someone definitely took her. So I think that that's giving people an idea of what to look for. The family and police are still asking the public to keep their eyes peeled for these three vehicles photographed in the St. Streets area the same night as Mickey, hoping someone saw something and can finally bring Mickey home and back to her family. The disappearance and subsequent finding of the bike were featured in the local news on TV several times a day as police were appealing for witnesses and information to find out what had happened. A lead came into the police from a sales associate who was working at a car dealership in Louisiana. She said that she had spoken to a man who was looking to purchase a new truck as he said that his old one had been stolen a few weeks earlier. The TV was on in the office and when a news clip came on showing Mickey she said that the man became nervous and agitated and that he made an excuse to leave and quickly hurried out. Only a short while after this encounter was reported to the police, there was a report of a white Chevrolet Z71 pickup truck that had been found burnt out in San Jacinto County, Texas. The truck was a match for the one the police were looking for and the truck's license plates luckily were in perfect condition even after the fire. After running it through the national database, they found that the truck was registered to a Brandon Scott Levine. Investigators looked into his background and it emerged that Levine was a 32-year-old registered sex offender. He had previously been arrested in the year 2000 and served eight years in prison on charges of aggravated sexual battery and burglary and he had been released from prison in 2008. Investigators also uncovered further evidence against him as his ex-wife had reported him to the police for violence in their relationship saying that she was often choked by him and physically assaulted during their marriage. She also said that he had an addiction to using escort services. On the 5th of July 2012, a warrant for his arrest was issued. He was then arrested on charges of aggravated kidnapping and first degree murder. Today, after weeks of searching for a missing Lafayette College student, police have made a break in the case. Lafayette police say a tip from a concerned citizen helped lead to an arrest in the Mickey Shunick case. Shunick has been missing since May, and now a man is in custody for her murder. Police have arrested 33-year-old Brandon Laverne on charges of kidnapping and first-degree murder. A month later, human remains were found. A Lafayette TV station is reporting that police have discovered human remains and the report indicates the body may be that of Mickey Shunick. The 21-year-old disappeared from Lafayette back in May. Now officials in that community have not made any statements about this discovery, but KLFY is reporting a body was found today in Evangeline Parish and police are on scene at an undisclosed location conducting a search that is related to the... Detective Stephen Baja and his team wanted to hear the full story of what had happened to Mickey on that night. 
They spoke to the family and it was agreed upon that a plea deal would be given to Levine if he gave police the full details about what had happened that night and that he would be spared the death penalty and would be instead handed a life sentence. Levine told the police the horrifying events that had happened that night in the early hours of 19th of May. He said he had been driving along a road and had spotted Mickey cycling along. He decided to run into the back of her and had created this accident deliberately in order to offer her a ride and to get her into his vehicle. After she had got into the truck, she instinctively knew she was in danger and pulled out her phone to call for help. Levine attacked her and Mickey sprayed him in the face with some mace that she was carrying in her bag and then she grabbed the knife from him and stabbed him several times. Good afternoon everyone, Jim Hummel coming to you live from the Lafayette Parish Courthouse with breaking news in the state's case again against Brandon Scott Laverne. Just moments ago, Brandon Scott Laverne pled guilty to murder, two counts of murder for both Mickey Shunick and Lisa Pate. This the result of a plea deal with the prosecution that we learned of in court. As for the Mickey Shunick case, they say that Brandon Scott Laverne uh, followed her down St. Landry Street, which we saw that photo, that surveillance photo, that last photo of Mickey Shunick. They say that Brandon Scott Laverne struck Mickey Shunick while on her bike between Dean and Coliseum Road there. He then, that collision threw Mickey off her bicycle. Mickey then entered the Z71 pickup truck, Brandon Laverne's truck, that white truck, which Brandon Scott Laverne had a knife on him and also a semi-automatic handgun. During this, there was some sort of altercation, the prosecution said. Brandon Scott Laverne again signing off on these statements. Uh, they say that Mickey grabbed her cell phone, tried to call 911, at which point Brandon Laverne threatened her with that knife. Mickey then grabbed her mace and sprayed Brandon Laverne in the face with her mace. Uh, Mickey t uh, did try to fight him off. The prosecution made that very clear that Mickey tried to fight Brandon Laverne off, but uh, again, he was armed with a knife and also a semi-automatic handgun. Uh, at which point Brandon Laverne stabbed Mickey several times, at which point she was motionless in the passenger seat of Brandon Laverne's pickup truck. At that point, the prosecution and Brandon Laverne, again signing off on these statements, say that he drove uh, with Mickey's motionless body to a cane field in North Acadia Parish. It's there where Brandon Laverne told investigators he planned to dump Mickey's body. He was going to dump her body in a, in a cane field there. But at which point, at that point, Mickey jumped up, the prosecution said. She jumped up and had regained control of that knife that Brandon Laverne had and stabbed him several times. But unfortunately, and that's where it got very emotional in the courtroom, um, the prosecution and Laverne say that he grabbed his semi-automatic handgun and shot Mickey once in the head, killing her there. At that point, it just got so emotional in that courtroom. The family and friends, they, they were crying. Uh, they had gasped for air at that point. Uh, and then the prosecution went through uh, what Brandon Laverne did after that point. Um, but again, he did plead guilty to the murder of Mickey Shunick and also for Lisa Pate. As well as the murder of Mickey Shunick, he was also charged with the murder of another girl named Lisa Pate, who was also a Lafayette resident who had gone missing in June of 1999. He had persuaded her to get into his truck and when she became frightened and asked to go home, he placed a bag over her head and suffocated her. Levine was handed two life sentences without the possibility of parole. He is serving his sentence at Louisiana State Penitentiary in Angola, Louisiana. He is currently in solitary confinement for his own safety and he has filed several appeals, all of which have been unsuccessful it's highly likely that he will spend the rest of his life in prison. In 2015, an annual bike ride named Mickey's Loop was built in her memory. The eight mile route takes people through the city of Lafayette. It is a fitting tribute to Mickey who loved cycling and the outdoors. The city parish president, Joey Durrell said, this really highlights what she loved and we're so proud to honor her with this. Mickey's family released a statement. Her sister Charlie said, My sister Mickey Shunick was a warrior. 
If it wasn't for her, our community never would have been able to bring down such a dangerous man that harmed multiple people. Mickey's mum, Nancy, wrote, She refused to be a victim. My courageous child faced down a monster. Now I think I can face monsters too, and so can you. This is such a heartbreaking ordeal, listening to the details of how she struggled and fought for her life. But it's also an empowering story as well, as it shows that monsters can be brought down and fought against. Rest in peace, Mickey. Anyway, that's all for this time. But I look forward again to seeing you all in the next one, when we can investigate more true crime again together. In the meantime, stay safe, look after one another and love to you all.